put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version and the link is in the description box. Fury Movie Review. It's the end of World War II. Sergeant War Daddy is in charge of a five-person crew manning a Sherman tank, widely regarded to be the weakest type of tank from back then. And this is a lot like Das Boot with a... basically the crew who we follow and narrowly focus on, very claustrophobic of the, the you know, basically trapped inside this small, cramped, you know, vehicle, which is extremely vulnerable, and the crew know it. You know, I mean, it's... With war, it's life or death, and it can end in a matter of seconds, but with these vehicles, it does both more so. If if things start going wrong, that's about it. There's there's nothing they can do. The yeah, the the weapon that they are controlling is also extremely vulnerable. Now, this doesn't so much have a plot as much as. It's mainly about the characters. It's sort of... There are a series of events which are presented to us in chronological order, but it's not so much a plot as just we are seeing them carrying out their duties. It's... Yeah, it's... it's we, we see them do the, the jobs that they are doing in the tank and Basically, we see all the different aspects of that. They, you know, they joke with each other. They, there, there's a lot of, it, there's, it's, it's very much about the tight bond between these guys because they, they have to depend on each other. If these five guys are cogs in a wheel, if, if they, if a single one of them stops working. That's it. That's the, they're all dead. And yeah, in that and and with them living together in this tank, yeah, they get they get used to each other for you know for better or for worse. They so they're making fun of each other for the stuff and at the same time there's a sort of respect there. And yeah, you know, we see there that some sometimes there are these stretches where nothing really happens they're they're just driving towards the next place that they you know moving from one place to another and then suddenly there's you know explosion suddenly something happens that they have you know the the war rears its ugly head again and then there are times where you know yeah there there are various situations but this really captures the tedium that does exist in war. I, I see it too rarely. The 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 road also gets it. While not about war, it is also about surviving in a really hostile environment. And with a lot of these, there there is a tendency to just show you know the I don't want to say the good bits, but the 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 more interesting, more compelling aspects. And Certainly, there's it's that's good to do, but every once in a while, it's really good to have something that shows that, but also highlights there is a lot of tedium in a situation like this. This is not the kind of thing where, you know, and at the same time, you can't relax. 
it doesn't mean that it's like you know there some people say that oh this is kind of boring yeah I would, I would definitely have to disagree I, I I agree that there were sections of the film where not much really happened and you know like if you're rewatching you might fast forward through that or you know whatever I wouldn't but to each his own those are part of the experience you know it's there's a lot of waiting in war it's there's there's a lot of just waiting for something to happen and kind of hoping that it doesn't but knowing that it will and just can you know how, how do you how do you stay prepared for when it will happen it might not happen for 10 hours it might happen in two seconds how do you always stay alert and yeah, some some of that, you know, you you crack jokes or you, you know, yeah, this this really captures that aspect, along with many other aspects of war. Now, basically, these guys went through Navy SEALs boot camp. They were forced to live in the tank, made to physically fight each other. Not enough about the actor Pratt. I love David Iyer. Apparently, also, Shia LaBeouf refused to shower, which is a new level to his douchebaggery. Although he did also pull a tooth and the his character has a cut on his face. He did not want that done with makeup. He he cut his own face each time they needed so so yeah. Props. And he does really well in this. Everybody does really well in this acting wise. Lorman is probably the, the real standout as the rookie. But yeah, everyone does does fantastic. You know, you look at Brad Pitt in this. You you do not see a movie star. You just it's yeah. And I mean, this is not the first time that Pitt has shown he is willing to be ugly on camera. Now the yeah the 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 rookie basically right at the start of the film the you know they've lost the I, I don't remember exactly the the position but basically the the rookie comes in and he is manning one of the machine guns I think it's the coaxial machine gun and yeah they they had like this really great you know war daddy briefly describes him as one of the best you know of, of like some division or something and now he has the rookie and literally like the rookie comes in and excuse me early on he says I was trained to type 60 words a minute he is he is not supposed to be there but they they you know they bring in the new you know the young blood and that's that's it when sometimes when you lose a really skilled person in war the the one replacing him might not be as skilled and in this case he's not even trained for it and that that happens and war daddy realizes he has to break him as a human being in order for him to be any good to them and this is tragic but it's it's just it's too late in the war and they're too deep in enemy territory they are it is too risky. It is there's there's no way they're going to be able to to survive if they can't count on him to shoot when he needs to, even if he doesn't like to, even if he doesn't. No matter how much it repels him, he has to man that gun because otherwise he is dead weight, and that is that is a horrifying thing. But that is. That is something that is true of war. You, you, and and War Daddy realizes this, and he he goes through with it. And it's the characters here are so so well drawn. Every last one of them is a human being. There, there are times where you're like, oh, what you know? Yeah, there there are some where you're like, this is just you know. This guy cannot be anything other than just obnoxious and really, you know. But over the course of it, every single one shows to be, you know, shows some 
humanity in in one way or another and yeah there's there are there are no good guys there are no bad guys really it's just people in a situation and they have to do what they can to to stay alive and yeah there's there's just not much else to it they, and we see some really ugly things done by you know the US soldiers here as well including some of our main characters now the 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 tank has been the home to the crew for several years so yeah I already mentioned the their bond to each other they're also very attached to the tank itself and just the sort of environment that is within the tank which is you know where they are literally living and you know it's, it's not just something they use when they're fighting they live there because it's it's yeah and yeah the the atmosphere there is very clear and distinct and yeah i i think that's about what i should say about that now they, this does not have an awful lot of characters, or at least not a lot of screen time for very many characters, but that does mean we get to really know these five. And the. Suppose that. The. This is gritty, authentic, grim, unflinching, gory, and draining to watch with really high production values. This is right down there in the filth of war. There are literally... There's, there's some incredibly disgusting things in this. And just... You know... I'm not going to give away what it is, but the movie starts with just the the a contrast between these ugly things done in war and this sort of this this sort of hope for something not the war, something something more human, something that one can believe in, something not so soul-crushing, and it just, it does it so well, and if the movie did not have this, this tight, if it did not show this tight bond, if it didn't, if it wasn't so much, as much of a character study as it is, it would be unwatchable, because it would just, it would disgust you to to even try to sit through and and you wouldn't be able to yeah and and I, I say that as someone who's watched quite a lot of really you know gory and yeah I I'm not new to to this sort of thing but yeah just the the sheer brutality ugliness of the war here is insurmountable and the the only the only reason we can stand it at all which which we just barely can is these five guys and that's that's because that's how they do it that the, the only way they can tolerate it is this immense trust in the guy at there's like I said you know cogs in a wheel if they have to depend entirely on each other and that just you know, for starters, that's just how it is. If if one of them fails, they might all die. So that right there, you know, they really have to trust each other. But then from them really having to trust each other, of course, comes, you know, there's, you know, they get frustrated with each other's habits and personalities, and they, you know... And, and at the same time, there, there gets to be a certain respect, because they, they really get to know each other. And, yeah, that, that really comes across in the film, and the movie really understood. The, 
David Iyer is mostly known for the his, his films set in the environment of the LA gangs, which he has some personal experience with, real life experience with, and you know the, that insight into macho culture and and respect for it, whilst also showing the ugly aspects of it. He, he brings here, and I mean, th this is the first time he directs a, a period piece. I think he's written at least one other, but this is the first time he's directing one, and I, I, I hope he does more, because he did brilliantly at this. I mean, this, again, the, the, the guy is, no, you know, he's, this is like the, you know, I've watched three other films he directed. Harsh Times, Street Kings, and End of Watch. Yeah, those are about the L.A. crime scene, crime environment, you know. Yeah, he, he also did Sabotage. I hear that's terrible. I, I probably will watch it at some point, just, you know, to have watched everything higher. But, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to make any excuses for that. I, I have no idea what it's like. But, but yeah, I mean, he... He gets it, and he, we get to kind of like it and, you know, feel, yeah, we, we get to like it, but we also see some really, you know, horrible things through, and, and in, in the LA gang films, it's, you know, yeah, with, with that environment. There, there's a fatalism to his films, and where in those it's that sooner or later things go wrong with with this kind of crime or corrupt, you know, corrupt cops, whatever. In this, sooner or later, you know, in in war, sooner or later something horrible happens to you, and that just that that is that is a constant humming in the ears while watching this film is at any moment they, these guys could be dead and the again the only reason you can stand the only reason they can stand is because of each other now the, the this has I as determined to show the reality of you know what he is portraying as yeah, in his LA Gang films, and some have already pointed out, this is as intense and immersive as End of Watch. And it really, yeah, we, we really feel like we are trapped inside that tank, the, the way it, you know, in, in Dust Bowl, which, obviously, if you haven't watched Dust Bowl, watch Dust Bowl. You know, it, it, Wolfgang Peterson, I... I I am not sure I've seen a movie of his that I wouldn't, you know, recommend. And I mean, it's not even, you know, if you're like, ah, this book sounds a little, you know, dry, a little. What is it? He's done pretty, real, some really, really fun films as well. He, he, you know, he did Air Force One. So, yeah. Now, the this this is the third that David Iyer directs, with Harsh Times and End of Watch being the other two and yeah he he does fantastic he's he's one of these writer directors who yeah when they stick entirely you know when they do it entirely by themselves they can really put out a fantastic product and you know street king shows that he can direct somebody else's script pretty freaking well as well but here when we have you know action scenes they they're as ugly and unpleasant as the rest of it you know whether whether it is someone unnecessarily or you know whether it's someone who's accidentally hit or even one of their own who's hit or whether it's the enemy it, the violence and the brutality is just pervasively ugly here. You you never take any pleasure in it. You might feel relief in it, but that's it. There's there's this unbearable buildup of 
fear and anxiety and hatred and, and hope of surviving. And then every so often that gets released in these bursts of violence where at least, at least it is not me, it is not us, it is them. One of them who were about to kill us is dead. And we can we can breathe a little bit easier because of that. But there is there is no glory in it. There is no there is no actual pleasure in it. You feel filthy for thinking that. You it it's just yeah. The 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 movie traps you inside this tank, and you can you can smell all the blood and filth and mud and guts, and and you can you can just barely tolerated because of these familiar voices around you because there are at least people around you who aren't complete monsters there are people you know and can depend on and that the the movie brilliantly captures how that is really and that is you know that that's something that a lot of people yeah i'm going to bring Lord of the Rings into this a lot of people you know some people get really immature about the whole you know, Frodo and, and Sam relationship, oh, okay. No, it's it's just this really tight bond of two soldiers in war. They were always at each other's side. They had to depend entirely on each other. And yeah, that is a special, incredibly tight, special bond. And yeah, the, I, I have not read Tolkien, but I am told he captured it. The movies, you know, Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy captures it, and this movie captures it. And yeah, it's it's a fantastic. I I I'm not sure I've seen another war movie that so brilliantly captured that aspect. And there are there are countless war movies, countless World War Two war movies. This one still manages to find several things that really that really give you a reason to to watch. There are two scenes in particular in this that by themselves make it worth watching and I I don't think I should give away what they are but you might know them when you see them. I I will say that. Now, the others have noted that the last fifteen minutes or half hour of this loses you. You know, it's it's less realistic and such. David R. does not always deliver a fantastic ending. It's it's not always completely satisfying. In this one, I they kind of had to do something. They they had to deliver some kind of you know, in spite of all the moral ambiguity and just yeah, how how much this is not going to you know, this is not a movie you sit down and enjoy. This is this is an experience that you take part in and you learn from, but. Ultimately, it is still from, you know, to some extent, a product of Hollywood. So it is expected that there is a sort of big ending scene. I, I will say it, it could have been a lot worse. But yes, it is, it is unfortunate. And I kind of wish there's another scene in the film that I feel like should have just been the ending, the, the climax, but yeah, it's it is unfortunate. The the yeah, the last fifteen to thirty minutes you just kinda have to you know yeah, they're a little they're they're not quite up to snuff. Now some have also pointed out the you know the, the tracers look kinda like lasers. Yeah, I th I think it is slightly excessive, but yeah, if if it was taken down by a third or something, it would would be fine. But I I'm still glad that they are there because they do really add to the experience. And you know, they they did have tracers on machine guns and such. You know, ma making sure you knew where you were 
hitting and yeah now it has been pointed out that this is you know one depressing scene after another yeah I like I said the, the only reason you can even stand it at all is these five guys and the I suppose that it's very much an anti-war film, and, and I don't remember what reviewer said, but he used the term war horror film, and yes, that is, I, I completely agree. It is, it is a horror film you know, about war, and, and as he also notes, if, if I recall, that is quite appropriate. Now, it it kind of let's see. In closing, I will just give a few more details about the Sherman tank. Basically, it's fast. It was fast, maneuverable, and easy to mass produce, but the gun, its gun couldn't penetrate the panther or the tiger armor and you know not only could their you know guns easily penetrate the the Sherman again you know fast maneuverable the, yeah you know you, you only get so much of that taking away some of the you know armor and such and not only could the panther and tiger easily shoot through the Sherman so could the, you know, infantry anti-tank weaponry. And, you know, the, the Sherman was very easy to see, and it usually blew up when hit because of its construction. And for it took 50,000 Sherman tanks to take out 1,500 Tigers. And... Yeah, that's and that's the tank. That's the situation that our crew spent the entire movie in. Please rate and comment. And hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.